Well, hello, my community. It's been a while. I haven't talked to you. KubeCon is seven days away. We have an incredible amount of co-located events. I'm so psyched for it. I can't wait to see all your beautiful faces, live, virtual, however you all do it. Today, we're spotlighting two of these co-located events. There's Cloud Native Security Conf um, and also Supply Chain Security Con. We have Andres Vega, Emily Fox, and Dan Lawrence. So Spotlight starts now. How's that for production value, you all? Huh? That's amazing. Other talents besides coming into the tag security meetings and just like joking around. Mm -hmm. So before we get going, you mind if I do the code of conduct for everyone? Is that cool? Absolutely. Go ahead. This is an official live stream of the CNCF and such is a subject of, to the CNCF code of conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct. Basically, be respectful of all our fellow participants and presenters. So let's talk, you all. We've, you know, we as a group in tag security, we put together, you know, as the event leads of this, we put together this event with all these amazing pro programming committee. I want to talk to like people watching this. They're like, okay, well, what, you know, what are they in, in store for? I know what's, uh, what we're in store for, like as a part of the committee, but I really want to know what we're doing, like what makes you all pumped and let's talk about the impetus of it. That's a lot, Andres, right? I'll let you start. <laughs> yeah, where to start is the question. As, as Dan said, uh, Emily, myself, and him have been working behind the scenes, pulling together a dedicated space, a dedicated arena for security practitioners and aspiring security practitioners to come together. For as long as we've had KubeCon, there have been people who have been enlightened with security and know security very well. However, we haven't had necessarily a space for focus on security on the, on the ecosystem, not just uh, Kubernetes security. So here, here we are leading up to the first Cloud Native Security Con, which builds on a series of previous Cloud Native Security Days that have happened globally have happened twice a year for the past couple of years emily yeah uh, it's funny that you mentioned that i uh, spent some time looking at our repo today and realized that the first cloud native security day event was actually in 2019. Um, it was an idea first introduced from michael Ducey to provide the community with a security focused space that was vendor neutral because like you said Cloud Native is more than just Kubernetes security, it's about Cloud Native security, and there's a lot of other existing tooling within the ecosystem. You don't necessarily have to be a Kubernetes adopter to be able to take advantage of all the benefits that Cloud Native can actually provide you. So this is, it's been so many years, we've done North America and we've done Europe and we're back in North America again. This is my first time going to an in-person Cloud Native security day and con, so that'll be exciting. Yeah, it's um again, if you look at the, you know, the meetings that we have in tag security, I think it's I think this is like kind of the culmination of like people publicly kind of showing like all of these technologies working together, but also not so much of the people working together. You have disparate, like almost competing technologies to a certain degree working together for the common good for best practices. We think about white papers, we think about like you know, this policy dot you know document that just came out. Like again, that is to me is the joy that I enjoy so much about tag security, but also the, in the day, everybody's celebrating all the great technologies out there. So people are aware of them and can use them in their stacks, not just specific to Kubernetes, but cloud native in general. So it looks like we have some folks joining. Thanks so much for, for, for joining everyone. Uh, so a couple of uh, kudos here, some hello from Zoo. Is that how we say this in, in, the, in the biz? It looks like we have a uh, high guys from uh, Ashish. Ashish, and then we have a most amazing people here. They must be referring to you both because I don't know. You know well, John's including you in that. Oh, okay. Appreciate that. All right. So, I mean, let's talk about the schedule, you all. I mean, in terms of is there, you know, obviously we, we love all of our children 
like you know all were dearly right but let's I mean, is there anything you all excited just to check out and by the way everybody this is on october 12th this is when this is yeah it's october 12th um the program committee had a ton of submissions i think this is probably some of the most amount of submissions that we've ever received for cloud native security con or cloud native security day so like we had a hard enough time um but we did decide that because of the quality of the submissions that we received that we were going to open up the afternoon to dual tracks which is the first time we've done this and we're very thrilled to do it um andres what is one of the talks that you're looking forward to the most it's hard to pick just one, as you said. We had great submissions, uh, close to over 100 talks total that were submitted. Uh, we had about 20 different judges come through the schedule. It was very hard call, but we have a lot of representation and variety of, of content, which all together is what excites me the most. Cloud native security is, is often a, an intimidating subject. So depending on the track you decide to break out to, it will equip you to help decipher this often intimidating ecosystem. So there's plenty. We have great sponsors. We have also the largest number, number of sponsors till date. So if I were to pick one, let me let me sit on that one for a while during the call and maybe maybe we'll see what about you um so i had a hard time picking as well and i don't think i have a favorite but i have some that are very topical and important and i think that's also reflected in the two different kinds of tracks that we have um, supply chain security as you know is super important um dan Laurent, uh dan Laurent is also doing supply chain security day con joining <laughs> so us joining words. us later later in the show you all yeah, yeah. um so it's wonderful to be able to get that cross presentation from him about supply chain security. And as you know, our group released a supply chain security paper and we have a working group that's currently working in this space on a reference architecture. So that's exciting. Um, but we also have some folks that are going to be talking about data security, which I don't think gets enough airtime generally because a lot of the community isn't thinking about data-centric security or data-centric modeling. And as machine learning and AI are continuing to grow in that space, we should start seeing more security-focused talks around that subject area. Another one is the long and windy road that leads to cloud-native security. The, a lot of folks don't realize that cloud native ecosystem adoption is very complex and it's a hard topic for a lot of folks. And when you add security as a layer in addition to that, starting from scratch, it can be very tricky. And it's a it's not an insignificant burden for a lot of organizations to adopt. And that's something that the security tag is trying to break down. I think um, in general too, I mean, there's a lot of end user talks. I mean, you know, also I like that there's also some of the lexicon is being discussed as well, which is really cool because we we get so much jargon thrown at us all the time, right? There's so much of that. And to be able to kind of, kind of define those things to me are pretty, pretty awesome. But like, you know, you got like folks like NVIDIA, Trend Micro, Firebolt Analytics, there's all types of, it's not just, you know, it's the practice, it's not just, you know, you know, folks at, at at vendors or or you know, there's end users that are part of this kind of giving their kind of path. And to me, that's always it's always good to see when somebody you can walk a mile in somebody's shoes on what they're what they're doing from a security perspective. Yeah, that's a great point. And also representation of the state of things. A lot of these end user talks are not an end user dabbling initially with one of the projects. A lot of it is end users far along the journey of not just one project, but combining multiple solutions into a more cohesive system, which we go back in time to the first editions of Cloud Native Security Day. A lot of the talks were to introduce security tooling and security projects. And as the space has matured, we see a whole lot more of deep integrations of this system, one and the other. So we're gonna see talks that use uh, runtime security with Falco and o Open Policy Agent. We're gonna see talks with Open Policy Agent and Spire. We're gonna be seeing uh, different integrations at different levels of, of Kubernetes. So yeah, manifestation of, of where we come along. So I, I think people are seeing things in 
the in the landscape and working putting them together like things in like in toto inspire and in all of those types of things and again that's why i like and i love the tag security group because it's an amalgamation of all those things we find the best tools possible right and put them together in ways that like will address a certain security issue right and so and in these things what's great is it's 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 ever it's evolving right there's new technologies being so every year there's no folks coming in and presenting oh it's cool we're seeing kyverno Caverno is doing some great things, right? And so, um, shout out to uh, Jim and, and the team and the group over there. But like, it, and this is what we need to see. We need to we need to have those paths for somebody that's coming in, a little, like a late developer that doesn't understand a lot of these security paradigms, and seeing them in the context of it, you know, actual real time use is is really cool. So, I, I kind of want to ask this question in general. Um, what are you looking forward to, just in KubeCon in general, beyond just you know? Uh, the cloud, just the, the, you know, our cloud native security conference. I think that's a really hard question to ask. Um, for me, there's two different portions of it. One of the things that I loved about going to conferences in person is the hallway tracks and the people that you meet and the conversations that you can have, they're candid. They're not prepared. They're not like nobody's gotten into their own heads about them yet. So you're just hearing everything that's raw um, from the community, their passions, the things that are driving them and moving them forward. So that probably for me is one of the things I'm looking forward to the most is being able to reconnect with folks to talk about security, to talk about their problem space as well as their solutions that they're working on. How about you? Same question, Andres. Yeah, I I look year round to, to KubeCon is the, the one place where uh, all the community leadership is present. And there's a chance to catch up on, well, we've all been busy, but let me pay attention to what everyone else has been up to, what have they learned. It is a great knowledge, knowledge exchange. It is a great opportunity to extrapolate from the lessons of others, share our own with, with the community, there's, there's a lot around open source ethos and practice, which is the cornerstone of what KubeCon is all about. So also great to calibrate and, and modulate to like the spiritual source of everything cloud native. So I'm gonna change gears for a second, but go back I save the best for last. I, I think it's the best. It's one of my, my favorite parts of it is, let's talk a little bit about the CTF. Cause again, we have these two tracks, right? We, for the first time we're doing the two tracks, but also simultaneously, right? There is going to be a CTF, a capture the flag, you all for the layman who don't understand, whoever doesn't know what the capture flag is, I don't know. But a um, uh, shout out to Magno uh, and the team there. But I mean, we have, we have some guests, we have some hosts, we have some amazing stuff. Who, want, who wants to take a little, like a snippet of this? Just get everybody hungry for this one. See if they can, by the way, if you haven't registered, by the way, I'm gonna throw it back on the screen. Register now, please. Who wants to take this one? Emily, you go for it. So this is what, like our second time doing the CTF, maybe third or fourth, I keep losing track. We're so busy <laughs> whenever we do these events. Third, oh my gosh, it's been so long. Um, Control Plane has been a really great partner in the volunteers that we have to help running, run and execute the CTF. And we learn every year that we, we run this event. Um, we're excited because in addition to the regular CTF challenges that we have, I think we have five, maybe six, um, they're Hollywood themed, but we also have the live stream going on twice. So one's at 1215 Pacific and the other one is at 3 p.m. Pacific. I think I got this time, sorry. Live on what? Cloud native TV, you all. That's follow. right. Yeah. Um, so we've got some fabulous uh, co-hosts this time. They're not just from uh, the security tab. We've got some folks from the community that are gonna be co-hosting. Um, and we have a lot of really great special guests that I'm really looking forward to um, talking about the CTS, talking about how they got into um, capture the flag kind of challenges or just generally what their cloud native security journeys have looked like. Um, we, like, I can't say enough how much of uh, doing security is community related and being able to talk to folks and understand their methodologies and the way that they think about approaching some of these security problems. So having that streamed for the cloud native TV audience is going to be super fantastic and hopefully will help a, a lot of first timers in their CTF break out of their first container. You know, and with all the talks that take place, 
it's it's often hard to find the the quietness to well how do how do I put this to practice or let me let me rehearse this then we go back to work and we we get super busy it is said that knowing and not doing is the same as not knowing so it is a great opportunity for hands-on practical skills as Emily pointed out we have a, a great crew of red teamers blue teamers I, I don't know if ever we talk about capture the flag but I don't know if everyone knows what capture the flag is so there are flags to go after and in, in a system and you need to find your way uh, through these challenges to capture the flag so great opportunity to put all the tooling in practice some of the methodologies and a lot not just just talk but be able to retain a lot of the things that get discussed and, and exercises I'm looking right. forward to it. I'm going to I'm going to be trying to to do it throughout the event. In addition to emceeing. It's going to be it's going to be wild like I said it's and and again just to, so everyone knows is um myself and Andres uh are, are going to be emceeing this. Um it's it's going to be exciting. Like I said it's if you've all been to any of the tag security meetings we we have fun together so it's going to be exciting. Um, let's, let's, let's go home here. Let's talk to call to action. Everybody like, how, tell me how does uh, people, how, you know, obviously we know how to register is anything we can, you know, can do to kind of just get people to come and what, what are the, what are some other kind of like, give, give some more snippets out there. Like, Hey, what are you excited for that? People should come and check it out. Nice raccoon, by the way. See it. <laughs> <laughs> That's our raccoon. That's the mascot. If you've ever seen the security tag logo, um, you'll see our raccoon in it and they will be making an appearance at Cloud Native Security Con as well as throughout KubeCon. So see if you can find them. Boom. Any uh, any other uh, Andres before we uh, we let you go? Uh, any anything else you got? Come with an open mind. Come come to have fun. Learn. Uh, share what you've been up to. Teach others how you've been thinking about security. What have you been doing around security? And yeah, hopefully through those exchanges, we can all collectively safeguard our systems and our infrastructure. Totally agreed. And um, I want to kind of throw this out there. I want to say a big congratulations to to my friend, like literally my one of my dearest friends, Emily. And I, I want to say this to you. I'm really happy for you that you are now a co-chair for, for, for KubeCon. There's nobody more deserving working with you for the last, I don't know, year and a half, two years of like, we all see how awesome you are, and I'm so proud of you. I'm gonna, I'm on tears right now. Look, Pop is sappy sometimes, you all. Pop gets sappy, so I'm so proud of you. Thanks so much. It was, it was very unexpected and completely thrilling to be considered, let alone be have the opportunity and and work in an environment that allows me to pursue some of these opportunities. So I, I'm hoping that I can represent security and all of the KubeCons to come as well as represent security tag and the security community um, with making sure that we are well, well discussed and we are present and accounted for. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm going to let you go. I got to bring in uh, another person that uh, we uh, we all know. We mentioned him earlier. You know, you all know this guy. It's Dan. Looks familiar. How's it going? What's going up? well. All right, so we uh, so we we're gonna have a, we talked a little bit about software supply chain as part of um, you know the cloud native security conf, but let me uh, let you all go. Have a great day, Emily and Andres, and I'll and we'll talk to Dan about that that show. Thank you. Great. All right, my man, you're back. I'm back. We got back the, on the, the show. Two Dan's here. <laughs> so let me let me ask you a question here. Well, hold hold on. I gotta I gotta get something real quick. Hold, hold on. All right. All right. All right. Oh, all okay. right. That's all right. right. You ready? Do you feel comfortable now? You feel yeah, you I feel like you could talk? I think you've got to you've got to grow out the wig a little bit. My hair's been growing and yours hasn't. Well, that's life, buddy. You know, yeah. I gotta I gotta get it. Happens a new when wig. you get old. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I have the I have the quit button. I can I can kick you off. All right. So listen, I want to know. Let's talk about this in in general. Since you know we we had like the saw the 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 key signing ceremony for Six mm -hmm. Store, and and you know software supply chain pretty much is blown blown up. I mean, because of the executive order and stuff that's all going on here, I want to know, like, hey, we wanted to start this conference. Tell me about the beginnings of this so everybody understands, like, what it is and also why, you know, this is important. 
Yeah, so this is the first ever software supply chain focused, uh, you know, cognitive supply chain security con uh, this year. Um, it's the day negative one event. So it is Monday of next week. So Monday of KubeCon. Um, and yeah, why are we doing it this year? Uh, it's because uh, supply chain security has become a you know pretty important topic rapidly throughout 2021. Um, supply chain attacks started to pick up. 2019, 2020, and you know they're ramping up like crazy this year. Uh, so, one type just did a report a couple of weeks ago that said uh, there's been a 650 percent increase in software supply chain attacks this year. The European Union, the EU, just put out a report predicting another 400 percent increase next year. Right, and this is just a case of attackers finding an area in software like they always do, where we are underinvested, and uh, we as an industry have to come together to figure out how to pivot and get on top of this, uh, and you know increase the cost of attacks so attackers go somewhere else. So let's talk about software supply chain security conf. I mean, like yeah. what I'm a first again, it's a first year conf. Why would I go to this? Yeah. Uh, why would you go to this? Um, you should go if you want to learn more about how to protect your software supply chain. Right? Everybody in the cloud native ecosystem is producing or consuming some kind of software. Um, and because we're doing this all in the open, we're building all these awesome open source projects and we're using them together. We are all part of each other's supply chains. Uh, this is not something any one company can come and uh, prevent or fix completely by themselves. But the community here, the community of the CNCF has shown that you know, we're all in this together and we all need to take a holistic look at software supply chain security and come together really to fix it together. So I'm looking at this schedule here. I mean, there's, again, the creme de la creme from a CICD perspective, creme de la creme of, of like software. There's end users. I mean, we got like LF Public Health, Google, Booz Allen Hamilton. I mean, Talk me through this schedule, man, because I know you painstakingly put through this, right? I mean, talk to me like about some stuff that you're excited about. Yeah, I mean, we are starting out strong. So we've got uh, an awesome keynote uh, to start off here from uh, the Solar Winds Supply Chain Security Team. So if you've heard of supply chain attacks this year, you've probably heard of Solar Winds. Um, they uh, were victim to a really, really bad attack, which pivoted and ended up affecting a lot of their customers. So we've got Trevor Rosen from Solar Winds, who's going to do a deep dive on the attack, exactly what happened uh, to their Orion product, the Sunburst uh, attack, um, how Solar Winds then you know came together worked with the CNCF, worked with the CDF, with all these awesome open source technologies to correct this, to build the most secure supply chain they possibly could. Uh, so that's the one I'm most excited about. We get an end user report, we get some details on an actual attack, we get some real world implementation, um, and we get to tie it back together to you know, the projects that we're all here collaborating on. Uh, we've got some other awesome ones too, but yeah, you want to talk about that one a little bit first? I mean, dude, at the end of the day, this is your spotlight. You tell me exactly what you want to shoot on pitch. Oh, man. Yeah, that, that one's amazing. We've got uh, some more end user reports, right? We've got uh, people um, rolling out supply chain security on behalf of entire communities, right? Um, so every company here, you know, we're not building in vacuums, uh, but we are depending on a whole bunch of shared infrastructure usually. And in a lot of cases, this shared community infrastructure is not always that well looked after. Um, and so we've got Dustin Ingram from the Python Software Foundation. He's going to be talking about some of the awesome work, PyPy. Uh, PYPI, the Python Package Index, has been doing to improve the security of that you know, critical component of infrastructure. Uh, one of the scary parts of supply chain attacks is that there's always two parts, right? You attack a supply chain and then you pivot down to all the consumers of that spot in the chain. And so when you look around from an ecosystem perspective, there's all these really critical like super nodes, things like PyPy, things like Docker Hub, you know, these single points that are trusted and used by everybody across the industry. So it's great to see them taking it so seriously and you know, working on it. Uh, um, as a foundation. We've got some other pretty exciting ones. Um, we've got a uh, couple lightning talks. Uh, practitioners, this is a field that people might not always be uh, thinking about, but it's in security in 5G, you know, in the networking space, in the telecom, in the carrier grade space uh, from Ericsson. Fatih is going to talk about how seriously they worry about supply chain um, and how uh, they're working to protect it uh, for everybody using 5G across the world today. Let me, let me ask you this, because I say, you know, a lot of this, again, if you look at this, this is literally like the creme de la creme of software supply chain. But like, like I'm a, again, I'm a lay developer and I'm coming to this. What do I get out of this? Like, you know, because look, I, you know, this is heady stuff, you know, you know, there's crypto that you're know, like cryptography, there's whole, all types of stuff to this, but tell me like, I'm a developer coming into this. What do I get out of it? Yeah, I think of it really as just kind of a, a way to learn the current state of the art, the challenges people are facing, and uh, some takeaways about what you need to do. Um, anybody that's a developer should like 
know about uh, this whole area. It's it sounds all fancy, but it's really not right. It's really about taking a lot of the concepts, a lot of the normal you know cloud native security day concepts that we're going to cover in the next day, and just applying them to build systems. Forever, we've been fine as a development community, um, as an ecosystem, with uh, locking down our production instances and applying all these awesome runtime security features and policies about who can access nodes. Uh, but then the build machine is still sitting under somebody's desk. And so uh, if you're not uh, doing any of these security features, the runtime security or anything like that on your build machine, then that's how these attacks can happen. So a lot of it is just reminders and uh, showing you what other companies and other communities have done in this space. Oh, I see we got some questions in chat. Uh, there's, I asked for some questions in chat, but there's awesome. somebody, it looks like uh, John All here right. All right. noticed that there's Operation yeah. Salsa. All right. Yeah, I've, I've heard about that a little bit. Yeah, so Salsa stands for, uh, I can never remember the acronym, um, Supply Chain Levels for Software Artifacts, something like that. Uh, it's also a really awesome type of dip. Um, and uh, to help spread awareness about this framework, it's kind of a, a set of guidelines, a set of levels that you can uh, look at to make improving your supply chain more approachable and digestible. Uh, we put together a pretty fun video series called Operation Salsa. Um, I posted some teasers on Twitter. We can uh, retweet another one of those live during this, the, the short version of it. Uh, but we are going to be airing some more footage live uh, at KubeCon of Operation Salsa. So stay tuned. There's uh, plot twists. There's danger. There's intrigue. There's explosions. There's explosions. There's puns. Uh, even better. So there's a lot of Iowa. All right. So Cost moving on. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let's talk about this in terms of when is the event? Yeah. So the event is all day Monday. Um, I'm going to get the date wrong. So I'm just going to double check. It's October 11th. It is. Monday, October 11th. Um, so it is the day negative one, as I call it, the first day zero. Uh, event in LA and remote. All the stuff will be live streamed. We've got a bunch of uh, pre-recorded remote talks as well. So, so, so rid riddle me this, Dan. Again, so yeah. for the people that are remote here, you know, again, there's some pre-recorded stuff that's going to be playing and stuff like that. But like, is um, what what what's you know, what are you going? What are we doing? And I asked the same question before as well. But like, what are we doing just to make sure the experience is just as good for the virtual as well as the in-person? Yeah, so I, almost half of the talks have been pre-recorded, actually, um, and so everybody's going to be able to watch them all live. There's going to be questions and answer, uh, question and answer after each session. Um, all the stuff is going to be up recorded at the end. Um, yeah, what else am I missing? Well, I mean, dude, yeah. it, 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 let me ask you this. I mean, yeah. it, again, there's there's the 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 tool that's being used for the yeah. for KubeCon general. There's a moderator, so you can interact right, right, right. with the folks that are in there. So um, again, a lot of the speakers can interact as they're as they're doing the talks as whatever. Right. So so people should feel like they're part of, you know, this whole experience in KubeCon in general. So, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it's really it's, it's one conference, both in person and remote. You're going to get uh, an awesome experience either way. So so Dan, let's let's switch gears for a sec as as we finish out here. Um, what are you excited about in KubeCon in general? Uh, in general, I'm excited to get back together with this community, right? It's been so long. I am going to be there in person. Um, I'm excited for, for that to kick off again. Um, I'm excited, uh, yeah, for the day zero events, both of these, uh, day negative one and day zero. Man of, man of many words. All right. So lastly, this is the go home here. So yeah. this is the call, call to action yeah. here. How does one like, uh, you know, people can register. How do, how would they register? Tell me about that. Like, you know. Yeah, we've got links here. Uh, go on and register. Um, you can register either in person or remote. Um, it is early in the conference, so if you're not going to be there yet, you can always watch that remote before you arrive. So don't let that be an excuse to not participate. Um, really, there's going to be some awesome sessions here. So pay attention. You might see this wig live. Mm. Just letting you all know. This wig might be live at that I've session. I've instructed security to not let Dan in. <laughs> Well, Dan, we did it, buddy. Listen, let, this this is it. Is there any parting words you have before I let you go? No, I think we covered it all here. It's going to be fun. Uh, there is going to be Operation Salsa. There might be a wig if Dan can sneak by. Uh, yeah, okay. come join us. It's going to be a lot of fun, y'all. All right. See you later, bud. All right. So, again, we had a couple of amazing events we talked about today, you all. I mean, again, these the, – these, the, the, the uh, co-located events are always fun, right? We get to we get to see like different aspects of you know normal talks that we see at KubeCon. I'm excited for 
Um, I'm also excited that uh, we, we next week we're we're going to be doing some um, talks from we're going to be doing recaps all next week from the floor of of KubeCon. So we're uh, Cube Cloud Native TV. We'll have a booth all next week. We're going to be doing recaps. So some of your favorites uh, hosts like Pat Cosgrove. Chris Short's going to make an appearance next week as well. I'm really excited to have Chris back. Uh, I'm going to be doing day one with my a legend. I call him the Babe Ruth of you know uh, of of what we do. It's uh, Stu Miniman who used to be on the Cube. He's going to be doing. He's going to be on with me and Lackey, and we're going to have uh, Sig Honk on. We're going to have Priyanka. We're going to have Stephen Augustus. It's just it's a action pack next week. I'm so excited to see you all. Um, please, if you haven't registered thus far for, for KubeCon, you know what it is here. I'll throw this on the screen as well. I'm so excited to see you all. So, so we're going to be so happy, but also look, uh, I'm going to be jumping in the hallway track as much as possible. I want to interact with you all as well, but there's so many talks. There's so many amazing things happening. There's so many keynotes. If you haven't registered for KubeCon, please do so. Really looking forward to seeing everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for, uh, uh, for Spotlight Live. We're going to have one more show this week. It's going to be Priyanka. It's the Go Home Show. We're going to talk about what's going on with KubeCon. Um, it's going to be great. So thank you so much for joining, and we'll see you next time. And if uh, I just wanted to let you know uh, that everyone that the Spotlight is on you.